Test 2 There are four parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. We will now stop for a moment. Please ask any questions now because you must not speak during the test. Now look at the instructions for part one. For each question, choose the correct answer. Look at question one. One. Which book does the girl recommend to the boy? Have you read any good books recently? Mm, I've just read a great biography about a wildlife photographer. Some of his experiences were just amazing. And now I'm reading a historical novel which takes place in a castle. It's based on a true story. Do you think I'd like either of them? I know you like photography, but I think a book I read last month about a famous chess player is more your kind of thing. It's also a biography, and I know you're not a fan of novels, especially about history. Now listen again. Have you read any good books recently? Mm, I've just read a great biography about a wildlife photographer. Some of his experiences were just amazing. And now I'm reading a historical novel which takes place in a castle. It's based on a true story. Do you think I'd like either of them? I know you like photography, but I think a book I read last month about a famous chess player is more your kind of thing. It's also a biography, and I know you're not a fan of novels, especially about history. Two. How does the girl usually get to school? You're at a new school, aren't you? How do you get there? I used to ride my bike to my old school, but I can't do that now. There are too many busy roads, so my mum doesn't like me doing it. Now I walk there most days, even though it's quite a long way, so it takes a while. On Fridays, I always get the bus home because I have football practice after school and it's always dark when it's finished. Now listen again. You're at a new school, aren't you? How do you get there? I used to ride my bike to my old school, but I can't do that now. There are too many busy roads, so my mum doesn't like me doing it. Now I walk there most days, even though it's quite a long way, so it takes a while. On Fridays, I always get the bus home because I have football practice after school and it's always dark when it's finished. Three. Which is the girl's favourite photo? Can I see your photos, Joe? Sure. This is a waterfall I visited. I was really impressed by it, but it started to rain and that kind of spoiled my picture. Then this one of a harbour's interesting. Actually, I think out of all of them, I prefer it because of the light on the boats. And this photo of a river's got beautiful colours, hasn't it? Mm, shame it's a bit dark. Actually, I think they're all pretty good. You're a great photographer. Thanks. Now listen again. Can I see your photos, Joe? Sure. This is a waterfall I visited. I was really impressed by it, but it started to rain and that kind of spoiled my picture. Then this one of a harbour's interesting. Actually, I think out of all of them, I prefer it because of the light on the boats. And this photo of a river's got beautiful colours, hasn't it? Mm, shame it's a bit dark. Actually, I think they're all pretty good. You're a great photographer. Thanks. Four. Who will be on the TV programme today? And now it's time for our series on people's jobs in medicine. Last week we met Mike, the vet, who came in to talk to us about his job helping sick animals. 
In a moment, we'll hear about Alan. He works in a pharmacy. He's had many of his customers for years, and he's got some very interesting stories to tell us. In next week's programme, we'll meet John at work in his dentist's surgery and see how he deals with nervous patients. Don't miss it. Now listen again. And now it's time for our series on people's jobs in medicine. Last week we met Mike, the vet, who came in to talk to us about his job helping sick animals. In a moment we'll hear about Alan. He works in a pharmacy. He's had many of his customers for years, and he's got some very interesting stories to tell us. In next week's programme, we'll meet John at work in his dentist's surgery and see how he deals with nervous patients. Don't miss it. Five. What are the brother and sister going to put in the room? This room's perfect for the party. It's got big windows, so it'll be really bright when our friends arrive, and later we can close the curtains and light some candles. I'm not sure Mum will agree. But anyway, we can just turn a few lights on. OK, but how about getting some balloons to decorate the room? We need a party atmosphere. Mum won't mind those. And if we move those tables to the side of the room, there'll be plenty of space for dancing. Now listen again. This room's perfect for the party. It's got big windows, so it'll be really bright when our friends arrive, and later we can close the curtains and light some candles. I'm not sure Mum will agree. But anyway, we can just turn a few lights on. OK, but how about getting some balloons to decorate the room? We need a party atmosphere. Mum won't mind those. And if we move those tables to the side of the room, there'll be plenty of space for dancing. Six. When will the school be able to use the pool? Welcome back, everyone. There's lots that's new this term. One thing is swimming lessons at the town swimming pool. I know many of you are very excited, but you're going to have to wait until it's ready. It's closed for cleaning and will open to the public on the 6th. The cleaning actually finishes on the 4th, but the changing rooms will be ready on the 5th. I'm pleased to say that lessons can start that day, so you won't have long to wait. Now listen again. Welcome back, everyone. There's lots that's new this term. One thing is swimming lessons at the town swimming pool. I know many of you are very excited, but you're going to have to wait until it's ready. It's closed for cleaning and will open to the public on the 6th. The cleaning actually finishes on the 4th, but the changing rooms will be ready on the 5th. I'm pleased to say that lessons can start that day, so you won't have long to wait. Seven. What will the girl send to her aunt? Guess what arrived for me yesterday from my aunt in Australia. A handwritten letter. I don't think I've ever had one of those. I've had postcards, though. Oh, for homework for my Spanish class, the teacher says we've got to write a postcard and send it to her. It'll be the first time I've ever sent one. But my dad was 20 before he wrote an email. Imagine not having email. Anyway, I'm going to reply to my aunt in the same way, rather than email her back. Another first. Now listen again. Guess what arrived for me yesterday from my aunt in Australia? A handwritten letter. I don't think I've ever had one of those. I've had postcards, though. Oh, for homework for my Spanish class, the teacher says we've got to write a postcard and send it to her. It'll be the first time I've ever sent one. But my dad was 20 before he wrote an email. Imagine not having email. Anyway, I'm going to reply to my aunt in the same way, rather than email her back. 
Another first. That is the end of part one. Now look at part two. For each question, choose the correct answer. Eight. You will hear two friends talking in a shoe shop. These trainers are my size, but they only have them in green. That wouldn't be my first choice of colour. But I'll try them on and see how they feel. That's the most important thing. My old ones were a bit tight. I only chose them because they were half price in a sale. Those look good on you. The colour's really stylish. Yes, but everyone at school's wearing black ones these days. Anyway, these are made from a new kind of material and feel really light. Much nicer than my old ones. <laughs> They're great. I hope I've got enough money. Now listen again. These trainers are my size, but they only have them in green. That wouldn't be my first choice of colour. But I'll try them on and see how they feel. That's the most important thing. My old ones were a bit tight. I only chose them because they were half price in a sale. Those look good on you. The colour's really stylish. Yes, but everyone at school's wearing black ones these days. Anyway, these are made from a new kind of material and feel really light. Much nicer than my old ones. <laughs> They're great. I hope I've got enough money. Nine. You will hear two friends talking about a sailing course they went on. I really enjoyed the sailing course we did last week. So did I. The instructors were good, especially the one on the last day. He explained things so clearly. It was incredible that we got to take part in a race at the end of the course. It was a shame not to win, but as we'd only just started sailing, I suppose it was only to be expected. The others had more experience in boats than us. We've still got a lot to learn. <laughs> and you can't expect to be an expert after just one week. True. Now listen again. I really enjoyed the sailing course we did last week. So did I. The instructors were good, especially the one on the last day. He explained things so clearly. It was incredible that we got to take part in a race at the end of the course. It was a shame not to win, but as we'd only just started sailing, I suppose it was only to be expected. The others had more experience in boats than us. We've still got a lot to learn, <laughs> and you can't expect to be an expert after just one week. True. Ten. You will hear two friends talking about a new computer game. Have you heard about that new computer game, Space Giants? Yeah, I read about it in one of those gaming magazines, Game World. Yes, I heard there were articles about it in all the games magazines. My best mate just got the game and I'm going round to hers to try it. It's supposed to be brilliant. Everyone's talking about it on the internet too. I prefer to see if it's popular with people I know though. That gives me a clearer idea of whether it'll be any good. I'm the same. You can't always believe magazine reviews or comments on websites. Now listen again. Have you heard about that new computer game, Space Giants? Yeah, I read about it in one of those gaming magazines, Game World. Yes, I heard there were articles about it in all the games magazines. My best mate just got the game and I'm going round to hers to try it. It's supposed to be brilliant. Everyone's talking about it on the internet too. I prefer to see if it's popular with people I know though. 
That gives me a clearer idea of whether it'll be any good. I'm the same. You can't always believe magazine reviews or comments on websites. Eleven. You will hear a boy telling his friend about a football match. Have you heard? They've postponed today's under 16s championship match. Oh no! What's happened? The organisers had a look at the football field they were supposed to play on and said it's just too soft because of all the rain recently. Oh dear. And I heard that some players had been sick too, which could affect how well they'll play. So, what's going to happen now then? The organisers are going to try and find another place for Friday, but it probably won't be anywhere around here. I'm sure they'll find somewhere suitable.、Mm, I hope it stays dry for it. I think the forecast said storms for Friday. Too bad. I hope we can still get to go though. Now listen again. Have you heard? They've postponed today's under 16s championship match. Oh no! What's happened? The organisers had a look at the football field they were supposed to play on and said it's just too soft because of all the rain recently. Oh dear! And I heard that some players had been sick too, which could affect how well they'll play. So, what's going to happen now then? The organisers are going to try and find another place for Friday, but it probably won't be anywhere around here. I'm sure they'll find somewhere suitable.、Mm, I hope it stays dry for it. I think the forecast said storms for Friday. Too bad. I hope we can still get to go though. Twelve. You will hear two friends talking about a new podcast. Have you listened to that new podcast that's by teenagers for teenagers? Yes, a couple of times. It's great having people our own age presenting the whole thing, rather than older people, like on most podcasts. And they don't always try to make everything sound positive. They tell the truth, which makes a nice change. That's what makes it different, I guess. I like it, even if it isn't always about subjects I'm into. You know, clothes, technology, music, and stuff. It deals with more serious topics. I'd like more of a mix of subjects. I like fashion mainly. Now listen again. Have you listened to that new podcast that's by teenagers for teenagers? Yes, a couple of times. It's great having people our own age presenting the whole thing, rather than older people, like on most podcasts. And they don't always try to make everything sound positive. They tell the truth, which makes a nice change. That's what makes it different, I guess. I like it, even if it isn't always about subjects I'm into. You know, clothes, technology, music, and stuff. It deals with more serious topics.、Mm, I'd like more of a mix of subjects. I like fashion mainly. Thirteen. You will hear two friends talking about their holidays. So, how were your holidays? Where did you go? Up north. We flew there and went walking in the mountains. There wasn't much to do apart from walking. Really? I prefer the seaside anyway. I like to be active, and there's loads more to do at the beach. I'm more into just lying in the sun doing nothing. So, how was your journey to the mountains? You went by plane, right? Yeah. The flight was delayed. I think for some journeys, trains are just as fast. I still prefer flying, even though it's more of an adventure going by train. Now listen again. So, how were your holidays? Where did you go? Up north. We flew there and went walking in the mountains. There wasn't much to do apart from walking. Really, I prefer the seaside anyway. I like to be active, and there's loads more to do at the beach. I'm more into just lying in the sun doing nothing. So, how was your journey to the mountains? 
You went by plane, right? Yeah, the flight was delayed. I think for some journeys, trains are just as fast. I still prefer flying, even though it's more of an adventure going by train. That is the end of part two. Now look at part three. For each question, write the correct answer in the gap. Write one or two words, or a number, or a date, or a time. Look at questions 14 to 19 now. You have 20 seconds. You will hear a teacher telling her students about a trip to a museum. Right, everyone. I'm going to tell you about our trip to the city museum. The museum isn't far. It'll only take us about 20 minutes to get there. There'll be several events during the day, and you'll have the chance to walk around the museum for at least 50 minutes. To begin with, though, we'll listen to the museum director for about 30 minutes telling us about what there is to see there. Her name is Jane Witten. She's asked students to send questions by email before the trip, which she'll try to answer. I'll give you her email address. It's witten at museum.org. That's W-I-T-T-O-N. Usually in a museum, you're not allowed to touch what's on display. But on this visit, we are. You'll all work in groups, and each group will be given pots to pick up and look at and think about what they were used for. They're very old, so be careful. You'll study some ancient rings, too, although I'm afraid they'll stay in their glass case. The museum also has a technology centre for education and research. You'll be able to find out lots of interesting facts. Rather than using computers, though, tablets will be provided. You can work on these to search for information. When you've finished your research, for the final activity, you'll do a quiz to see how much you can remember. Don't worry, it's not a test or even a competition. It's just for fun. It'll be interesting to see what you've learned. When we get back to school, I'd like you to design and make something to show other students. The museum has sent us some of their postcards, which you can use to give you ideas for the posters I want you to draw. OK, I think that's everything. Now listen again. Right, everyone. I'm going to tell you about our trip to the City Museum. The museum isn't far. It'll only take us about 20 minutes to get there. There'll be several events during the day and you'll have the chance to walk around the museum for at least 50 minutes. To begin with, though, we'll listen to the museum director for about 30 minutes, telling us about what there is to see there. Her name is Jane Witten. She's asked students to send questions by email before the trip, which she'll try to answer. I'll give you her email address. It's witten at museum.org. That's W-I-T-T-O-N. Usually in a museum, you're not allowed to touch what's on display. But on this visit, we are. You'll all work in groups, and each group will be given pots to pick up and look at and think about what they were used for. They're very old, so be careful. You'll study some ancient rings, too, although I'm afraid they'll stay in their glass case. The museum also has a technology centre for education and research. You'll be able to find out lots of interesting facts. Rather than using computers, though, 
tablets will be provided. You can work on these to search for information. When you've finished your research, for the final activity you'll do a quiz to see how much you can remember. Don't worry, it's not a test or even a competition, it's just for fun. It'll be interesting to see what you've learned. When we get back to school, I'd like you to design and make something to show other students. The museum has sent us some of their postcards, which you can use to give you ideas for the posters I want you to draw. OK, I think that's everything. That is the end of part three. Now look at part four. For each question, choose the correct answer. Look at questions 20 to 25 now. You have 45 seconds. You will hear an interview with a boy called Noah Kelly who is talking about his love of horse riding. I'm talking to Noah Kelly, who is a big fan of horse riding. Noah, why did you start horse riding? Uh, well, as a small child, I never had much interest in horses, though I wasn't scared of them. Um, I didn't do anything sporty, really. My older sister started horse riding lessons and was always out riding. I used to see the look on her face when she came home, really cheerful, so that's why I decided to try it. And I understand the horse riding club you go to is a little unusual. That's right. When you think of horse riding, you always think of the countryside. Well, this place is in the middle of the city. I love it. I'd spend every hour of the day and night there if I could. And the people that go riding there are just as cool as people anywhere. Tell us about your riding teacher. Well, what I like is that she makes sure we understand everything that riding involves. I mean, like looking after the horses as well as riding them. She shows us it's not all about fun, although we all have fun together too. And we're not allowed to always ride the same horse. She knows them well, how every individual horse will behave, and she wants us to learn that they're all different. How have you benefited from horse riding? It's changed me. I was always pretty fit because I liked walking, but being with horses so much has made me calmer, more willing to wait for things. Mum says she hoped I might become a bit more organised. That hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Do you take part in horse riding competitions? Yeah, this year was my first time. I thought they were just for people who own their horses, but you can borrow or even hire one easily enough. I went with a group of friends from the club. That was the best part. There was so much to do, though, both before and while we were there. I was exhausted afterwards. Will you carry on riding when you're older? Mm, I watch the little kids having their lessons at the club, and I wonder about teaching, but I'm not sure it's for me. What really attracts me is the idea of training horses. You know, the ones they use for races. I know I'd like a job that involves horses rather than just riding as a hobby. Thank you, Noah. Now listen again. I'm talking to Noah Kelly, who is a big fan of horse riding. Noah, why did you start horse riding? 
Well, as a small child, I never had much interest in horses, though I wasn't scared of them. Um, I didn't do anything sporty, really. My older sister started horse riding lessons and was always out riding. I used to see the look on her face when she came home, really cheerful, so that's why I decided to try it. And I understand the horse riding club you go to is a little unusual. That's right. When you think of horse riding, you always think of the countryside. Well, this place is in the middle of the city. I love it. I'd spend every hour of the day and night there if I could. And the people that go riding there are just as cool as people anywhere. Tell us about your riding teacher. Well, what I like is that she makes sure we understand everything that riding involves. I mean, like looking after the horses as well as riding them. She shows us it's not all about fun, although we all have fun together too, and we're not allowed to always ride the same horse. She knows them well, how every individual horse will behave, and she wants us to learn that they're all different. How have you benefited from horse riding? It's changed me. I was always pretty fit because I liked walking, but being with horses so much has made me calmer, more willing to wait for things. Mum says she hoped I might become a bit more organised. That hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Do you take part in horse riding competitions? Yeah, this year was my first time. I thought they were just for people who own their horses, but you can borrow or even hire one easily enough. I went with a group of friends from the club. That was the best part. There was so much to do, though, both before and while we were there. I was exhausted afterwards. Will you carry on riding when you're older? Mm. I watch the little kids having their lessons at the club, and I wonder about teaching, but I'm not sure it's for me. What really attracts me is the idea of training horses. You know, the ones they use for races. I know I'd like a job that involves horses rather than just riding as a hobby. Thank you, Noah. That is the end of part four. You now have six minutes to write your answers on the answer sheet.
You have one more minute. That is the end of the test.